Welcome, Meiju. We we are live. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. So happy to have you here. Um, we are coming to you live, and we are here for the GEG NorCal launch. Yay! Woo! We're, we're so, so happy to have you. And um, we're lucky enough to begin this with a little bit of a welcome from Meiju. So I just wanna give her a welcome. She's from Google for EDU and I'll let her introduce herself. Thank you, May. Yeah, thanks Steph for organizing this. Um, my name is May. I think I met a lot of you guys either just over email or over chat at some point. Um, again, I'm the owner of our trainer program. So it's super nice to see all of you guys here joining. Um, Steph, thank you so much for leading this along with your trusty uh, group of leaders. Um, I know they're in the back right now helping out, uh, but it's so great to see uh, a lot of folks who are actually interested in starting GGs have reached out to me saying that they're going to attend this session to learn more. So yeah, really excited for everyone to see the rest of the content. Um, I really do love being uh, part of our trainer program and to be able to talk to you guys. So Thank you so much for always being so gracious, you know, so nice to me, um, appreciate it. So yeah, and I have to drop off soon, but I just wanted to come say hi and thank Steph so much again for organizing this awesome event. Thank you, May. Talk to you soon. Okay, thank you so much to May and, um, and we're going to officially launch. Um, we're so happy to have May at the start of this and it really made it feel like uh, a special way to begin. So thank you so much to her. We will also have some others coming in throughout our time here at our launch. Just so that you know what we're doing here today, um, I have a lot of people that are here with me. I am not alone and it would not be possible to do this by myself. And um, I am beyond grateful to have their support and help. And we'll be taking you through at the start a little bit about what our GEGs, um, information about that, some stuff that about what's new to GEG, the, to G Suite, along with um, kind of how we got this started. Uh, and then information about level one and two certification. We'll have a section on trainer top tips. And then we'll also have some innovator inspiration. We'll be closing with some Q&A. And I see that there are already things coming through in our live chat. We have some awesome people on the live chat that will be, uh, in addition, giving some advice there, um, some support there. And then we'll focus on some of those questions that seem to get the most buzz, as well as anything else that didn't get answered when we get to our Q&A section. Okay, so as we move us forward today, uh, welcome to the launch. This will, um, thank you again to May. This will all be available to you. We'll be giving you a bit.ly at the end that'll have everything. And I just wanna take you through um, and just say welcome. These are our presenters that are here for today and then some of some awesome people that are also helping out in the chat that are here. They'll introduce themselves as they come in as well, just so that you know. And when you have this, you can hover over it and it'll take you to all of their Twitters. But everybody that's presenting today is not only a GEG leader themselves, they're also a trainer and an innovator. So we are so excited to have you. And for me, the beauty of this is that we're here supporting each other locally, but we are global as well. So in terms of the story and how this began, um, I'm going to let Judy tell a lot of it because she actually is who inspired this journey the most. But for me, just a little bit of background before we get into presentations. In September of 2019, I was lucky enough to be part of the Singapore cohort of innovators. And when I was there and attended that academy, there were people that were from all over the world. And almost everyone that was there was talking about a GEG, a Google Educators group that they are a part of leading. And they talked about that as the beginning of their launch for understanding things about Google for Education. And when I left um, that cohort and that experience, I came home feeling like that's what's missing here. I didn't have that. I had to navigate that myself and I would go to different conferences, but there wasn't anything dedicated to it. And I was really lucky to have Judy Kim as my affinity partner. She's going to talk about that in just a minute. But she is who introduced me to this idea of 
thinking about getting something started and she propelled this journey forward. So I can't thank her enough for that. Um, and, and that's why I just wanted to fill a gap that I felt like was missing in, in our region. And I've been supported along the journey with all the speakers that are here today. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to Judy, who's gonna speak a little bit more about her journey and how it connects to why we launched this one. Take it well, away. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning. To, to my, my friends in Korea. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Stephanie and Gigi North California for having me here today. I am so happy to be a part of a Gigi North California launching event with a wonderful Google certified trainers and innovators all over the world. Allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Judy Kim. People call me Judy or Googly Judy. I'm a Google certified trainer and innovator and a leader of a Gigi Gyeonggi, South Korea. Very nice to meet you all today. As Stephanie mentioned, she and I were and still are affinity buddies to share ideas to develop our innovators' projects. And the word empathy put us together from day one until today. GEG is a group of Google educators who love to learn share what we learn and inspire and empower other educators, admins, students, and parents with the G Suite apps and digital tools that Google for Education provides us. And digital tools are now an essential part of maximizing learning and unleashing the 21st century students' potential. The 21st century learning needs to be more global and based on project-based collaboration. The 21st century learners are no longer passive consumers of data and information, but active and creative producer of information and new learning material for the learners in other cities, nations, and cultures. That means that we do need to modify our classes to equip students with the skills they need to be successful in a rapidly changing world in the 21st century. And Google Educators Group's GEGs meet the educational needs of the 21st century learning and teaching. Especially during the quarantine period due to coronavirus, GEGs all over the world actively help schools and educational districts with the distance learning. We, I call it Team GEG Gyeonggi, with the two co-leaders and 13 captains work closely together to learn, share, inspire, and empower with the GC for education. One of the greatest parts I love about my team, GEG Gyeonggi, is that we share friendship, hardship, leadership, and partnership. And we are looking forward to sharing ideas and experience and running cross-cultural projects together with GEG North California in near future. Thank you and congratulations, GEG North California and my dear friend, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judy. Uh, thank and you. thank you so much. And one of the main things that I hope that will continue out of this is Judy is an amazing leader and co-leader of her of her GEG. And it is so inspirational. And I continue to hope to learn from that leadership how we can grow here in GEG NorCal. And then thinking about the fact that this is something that in this day and age, right, when we can't meet in in person together that that really we have something that's bigger than just in our area but i would love to to help geg norcal become really strong so if there are those of you who are interested in supporting this and continuing we are more than welcome to have those that are interested support us and continue on and we'll be having more meetings and we'll talk about that in the future um, but GEG in general, it's an independently run community of educators. We are all here, we are all volunteers. Um, we don't work for Google, but we have certainly worked our way into doing lots of things that are connected and we are happy to do so. We're educators who inspire and empower each other to meet the needs of our students through technology in the classroom and beyond. And we connect through monthly meetups, meetups online, obviously, and um, through social media. And our goal is to share, learn, and collaborate. Really, it is to grow, like all of us. With that, I'm really excited to introduce you to our next speaker, Bonnie Shillette. She's going to be coming on, and I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself and go off here. And she's going to be talking to us about what's new within Google Suite right now and cool things to know about. All right. Um, I am Bonnie Shillette. I was lucky enough to attend the uh, Singapore cohort 
of innovators with Judy and Stephanie um, and a bunch of other amazing people. I lead the South Louisiana GEG. I'm a trainer um, as well. So we just wanted to talk a few things about what's new um, with the G Suite. So starting off, um, they've done a really amazing job. Uh, Google has really adapted to our new current situation and they've created a whole Google Teach From Home site um, with information about each product, how you can use it remotely, um, and then how you can integrate it into this uh, distance learning. Um, definitely take time to look at it. I personally really like it, like I said, and it's, it's a very centered hub for everything that you need for distance learning. All right, moving on. Um, this is something everybody's been talking about is they integrated Google Classroom and Meet really, really well. Now you can teach, uh, you can send those Meets out straight to students from Google Classroom. Um, you don't have to add a bunch of new users or, or teach students a new program. The Meets are built in seamlessly um, so to foster that communication, allow teachers to have those live lessons and link everything together. Um, and it's really been a great addition. I know a lot of you are already using it. Um, we've got tons of teachers using it. All right. So moving on, um, Meet is also now linked with Gmail. Um, there are some super cool extensions linked on this slide deck. Um, Grid View has been pushed out. So now you can see everybody in one place. Um, there's a really cool extension to get, uh, it's called Nod for student reactions. Um, students can raise their hand. Um, they can tell you, like you can get immediate feedback without everybody having to unmute their mics. And now there's a really, really cool um, extension called Meet Attendance, where you can keep up with students that are attending. Um, you can get that data and really, you know, ex really analyze who's coming, um, you know, and if somebody's not coming, maybe you follow up and say like, hey, do you have Wi-Fi? Hey, how's it working? Hey, do you have access to a device? And now you can start a uh, meet straight from Gmail. All right, moving on. Um, so what's changing? If you haven't looked or it hasn't been pushed out to yours recently, now there are templates in Google Sites, some really new templates um, that really are focused to a specific task. Um, definitely look into it. It's optimized for, you know, common uses. Um, and now you can enable users within Google accounts uh, managed by a family link. So you can have, you know, your family, if you have like a, you know, a site for your family to send out information to everybody, you can use that family link um, so everybody can access. And uh, moving out May 1st, uh, was you can share high quality video with audio and content in a meet video call, which was, you know, an issue for a lot of people. Um, if you're trying to show a video in those meets to other students, you now have that capability. So everybody in the meeting will see and hear the video. So you're not like trying to send everybody a video. All right. And this is something that's not necessarily new, but I love it. It might be new to you. You should definitely look at it. Um, Google Arts and Culture. Um, has synced with Google Classroom now, so you can um, uh, you can share it. You can make a gallery. Shit, they have a lot of like thematic units already planned, and you can just click a button, share it to Google Classroom, and um, you should definitely take a look at Google Experiments. Um, there's some really cool ones for music, a lot of stuff about AI, um, stuff that. Yeah, I see the comment. It's a hidden gem, definitely. And you can download the app and take your art selfie and it will find an art picture that looks most like you. Mine was not, I don't think it was very polite to me, but um, try your best. It's good. So um, yeah, just a lot of, lot of great things. I want to go ahead and move to Stephanie because she's got some great information, but let me know if you have any questions um, and thank y'all for listening. Well, thank you, Bonnie. That was awesome. I agree. I totally love Google Arts and Culture, but I don't get enough time to use it. I'm Stephanie. I am from Ohio. I am the GEG co-leader with Eric Kurtz for our Ohio, and we just had a meeting yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. And I'm going to be talking about Google certification with Level 1 and 2. So Level 1 is more of a base start, and it's more just learning the skills of Google where level two is more of that demonstrating mastery and you're more transforming your instruction to use Google. 
Um, I have known people to take level one or level two in reverse order. I am the type of person though that's type A. I think a lot of people in the chat know that. And so of course I did everything in order. So you do not have to. You can do level two first or you could do level one. Um, it's just up to you. Just think about how you do scatter your level one and level two tests. Because if you take them back to back, when you have to renew again, it's going to be kind of a pain if you have to do that right again at, away um, a couple years later. So just maybe think about that if you end up taking these level one and level two certifications. So level one is $10, where level two is $25. It's good for three years. So just like I was saying, if you take level one and then level two a week later, just know in three years you're going to have to do that again. So you might want to scatter them out a little bit just so you have some time to restudy or um, not be on a test for three hours. Yes, the exam is three hours long. So just make sure you have enough time and you're not interrupted. And the first time I did take the test, it took me the full three hours. And I think it was just because the system was a lot slower where they have made some changes and it is a lot quicker. So please plan for that whole three hours because you don't know what's going to come up during that time. It's pass or fail. And you have to get an 80% to pass. And then in here, I've linked resources. You will get the slide deck at the end of this meeting. And you can just see there's some sample questions, there's some training resources. And if you are interested in level one, there are the resources along with level two. So here are the resources for level two. Again, sample questions, there's different trainings, and there is level two skills checklist. There are multiple different certifications that you can get. And with these certifications become different benefits. So with level one and two, you get a nice badge. And honestly, the benefit that I got with taking the level one and two was confidence. After taking those exams, I really knew Google a lot better. Um, I took it a couple of years ago and I wasn't a huge technology fan. And after taking level one and two, I got more confident in my um, abilities and I felt more comfortable sharing with teachers and sharing with other students what we were doing in our classroom. You're gonna learn about the trainer and innovator communities um, after a while with Abid and Leslie and also Luis, but the trainer community is amazing. It is overwhelming. And then the innovator community is awesome, is really awesome too, and it's a three-day academy. So here are some tips for success. Make sure you go through the training center, and if you don't, do every single step in the training center, at least take the quiz and see where you need to practice and where you need to focus your skills at. Make sure you're prepared for the assessment. So that means going to the restroom, getting a drink, you getting a snack. Make sure you have your webcam ready and make sure that it works because you will have to have that on. And it, they take random photos throughout the assessment. You have seven days to take it as soon as you sign up, so make sure you have enough, that next seven days is available. I think it takes about 24 hours for the code to come through, and then you'll have to take it within seven days from that happening. Make sure you have the latest Chrome update on your device. I know a lot of teachers that I work with do not, and that red dot just drives me crazy. So if you have that red dot, please update your computer, even if you're not taking the level one or level two exam. And then make sure you know how to open an incognito window. Oh. And then some just more quick tips. You can't have a second laptop on. You just can't have another person helping you. Make sure you read all the questions carefully. When I took this test, I thought it was going to be multiple choice throughout the entire exam. It's not. There are tasks, and I will show an example of a task. So just know that there is a little bit of hands-on learning and not just multiple choice questions. Make sure you use the bookmarks from the pretest session to get there quickly. Make sure you pin your tab. This is a suggestion that Google does give you. Just remember to do it and that way you don't lose the window. Make sure you use the mark for review for any questions that you might not be able to answer right away. Do not skip questions and just try to answer to you the best of your ability. And then make sure you look at the clock and you organize your time so you have enough time. There's not gonna be a human that scores the test, so just know that it is a kind of a robot and it uses AI. Your results will be available to you in an email and you'll also get your badge if you pass. Don't overthink it, just take the test. 
make sure you follow directions exactly. It does not have to be pretty. Just make sure you follow every single one of the steps. And then once you're done, you can celebrate because you'll know if you've passed right away. And so I have been introduced to these awesome scenario game cards by Judy Kemp. And she has made these cards and they have green as the easiest, blue is like middle, and then red is the hardest. And they are focused for level one and level two. You could use these in your classroom to help students. And also here are some resources to help you with a checklist and a hyperdoc to review and a pacing guide. So you are all ready and prepared for this exam. And so we're gonna walk through an example. On this task card, as you can see that Judy provided, you can have all these different tasks. So this one says, you should schedule a meeting with two or more people and include a Google Meet conference. So again, I thought the test was gonna be multiple choice because I did not prepare, I was a bad student. And it was not multiple choice, which is honestly probably better for me because I do way better with hands-on learning. And so just know this is a task that you might have to do. After you make the event, we have to email the guests so that they know that we're running late. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through this with you. So you're gonna to go to your Google Calendar. You can find that in the waffle. You're gonna do two clicks, and then you're gonna add your guests. So there's my guest one. I'm gonna add my guest two. Once I've added my guests, I'm gonna click that Google Meet link, and I'm gonna add it so it's turned on. Once it's turned on, I'm gonna add a name for the event. Once you're all done, you're gonna hit save, and you can send an invite to those participants. Once you have saved it, it's gonna be on your calendar. You're gonna click that event, and there's a little email at the top right corner, and I can email all my participants and just say, hey, I'm running a couple minutes late, I will see you eventually. Once you've done that, you've passed your exam and that task, and hopefully you get all the other tasks completed. And now we're gonna go on to Lewis. Yay, that's me. Hi everybody, um, my name is Luis Pertus. I am a Google certified trainer, teacher, everything, innovator from New York City 19. Um, I am actually from Barranquilla, Colombia. So uh, I'm not the furthest south because I saw Jose connected. So Jose is even further south since he's in Argentina, but there's nothing we can do about that now. Well, um, trainer, trainer is very interesting. It is a, an awesome, uh, it is an awesome resource. It is an awesome community. And uh, the train your top tips that I can give you were mostly covered by Stephanie because she's very, very thorough. But then um, the easy part is becoming a Google certified trainer is very, very easy. Training, training teachers, training other people, training is hard, but becoming a trainer is super easy. So all you have to do in order to apply for certified trainer is to be prepared. And to be prepared, like it says in the slide, all you have to be is documented, and prepare for everything then so there's like four little tips that i can give you like just before you start you have to have some training under your belt it doesn't have to be particularly googly training it can be any training in particular uh the very important thing is step two is document your training sessions please you have to document everything you have to know how many people you actually trained you don't have to know exactly who you trained but it would be nice to have like a general idea who you're who you're talking to uh, always, always ask for feedback. Feedback is not only good for you as a trainer to get to know your audience and to know how you did and what they feel about your job, but also to make you um, a better trainer. But then also you can use that feedback as evidence of what you actually did. So, and then four uh, is always try and keep in touch with your trainees because trainees will always want more information and will always need any help. And you can always get back to them and make sure that your their experience with you is always very good. So uh, in teaching, in learning, you will teach. And in teaching, you will learn. And curiously enough, is this is a quote that I love that comes from a musician, Phil Collins, of all people. He's actually a drummer and a singer. And it's one of those things that really marks the experience of a teacher. The teacher... Uh, as you teach, you really learn from your students. And that's one of the things that I really like people to hold on to. And the more you train, the more you learn and the easier it is for you to do your job as a trainer. Next. 
please. Okay, so there's rec there's prerequisites to apply. There's one, you have to be a Google certified level one. Uh, the test, as you know, and Steph already told you, is worth $10. The level two test is $25. And then there's also the trainer skills assessment, assessment test, which is $15. All three of these are valid for three years. Oh, to apply for teacher, you have to have all three and they'll be expected you, you'll be expected to hand in copies of all three. They're all valid for three years. When you renew trainer, then uh, right now as things stand, you only have to have level two for now, but you don't have to retake any of the other ones. You do have to do like a series of quizzes at the end of every year to just to demonstrate that you're still on top of your game, but that's more or less it. Uh, but that's not all. That's only part one. Part two is what really scares people off. Part two is actually a trainer application video. Uh, the trainer application video has to be three minutes long. Uh, in the first minute, you're supposed to show your personality. You have to show that you're sort of googly and that people, you know, you have to throw yourself out there and show people what your style is. And then you have to really show some, I'm not saying be crazy and be wacky. It's just fun to let your personality, personality out there. And then two more minutes are at the end of the video is you explaining how to do something, hopefully some Google tool. So this is an example of my trainer video. This was handed into Google maybe three years ago. And that's me presenting myself. And then eventually it's an example of how to set up a Chromecast for a Chromecast, uh, wait, cast for education on your computer so that your students can cast to your screen and you can project it which is really nice. Um, all you have to do after that is after you have all that, you have your trainer application. The trainer application is actually quite long. Um, there's lots of information that you have to give Google for them to assess you and to score you. There's a bit.ly link to the trainer application website and you'll have a lot of fun. Um, actually, and all of the stuff that I told you to do before, which is keep a track of who you've been training, what you've been doing, and all of that will be asked of you during the application process. So you not only do you have to have that video, you also have to provide some uh, proof that you've actually been training people and that people have actually taken your advice and, and, and done their thing. So uh, that's, I think, it, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. After you're accepted to the Certified Trainer Program, you'll get a nice shiny badge and please wear your badge with pride. It took a lot of work for you guys to get this. You need all the certifications. Prepare your email inbox. You'll be added to the certified trainer group. And that certified trainer group is like the best resource for information and for help in the world. But it's on all the time. And, and it's not that bad, but but trust me, it's it's a very intense group. But you'll get all the information you ever need and all the help you'll ever need from there. Um, also, you, yeah, there you go. Next one. Okay, you'll also create an, a profile in the Edu Activity app, which is something we get access to as trainers. And then you'll be published in the Edu directory where people can actually go look for trainers and innovators and reference schools so they can know what kind of googly resources are in your area. There you go. And please choose to appear in the Edu directory so that Google knows and people know how many people are out there. Also, log your trainings. As May would have said, if she was still here, the more trainings we log, the more activity trainers show, and it's really fun. And people will and will demonstrate that we are really a force to be reckoned with, and we can teach people lots of googly stuff. Um, there's one more. Uh, you, you have to prepare and renew every year. The renewal process isn't as long. As long as you comply, you need to at, have at least 12 training events during the year, which isn't that bad considering that Training can be anything as simple from one-on-one -on -one presentations as you know one to many, or even online stuff like this. Technically, will be logged as a certified trainer training. And the last one, which is uh, you have to keep up to date in Google G uh, Google Certified Educator Level One and Two. And you don't have to keep Level One, but if you're training people to take the Level One exam, it's really nice if you keep up to date and you know what's going on during the exam, which is. I tend to do and it's not it's, and it's relatively inexpensive so it's not that bad and the last one is there are certain perks to be to being trainers so one of the most awesome perks of all is we get a 
free license to use the Google Suite for education in our own personal domain. And then um, uh, you are able to install your own domain and run it as if you were a school and you have all the toys and gadgets that a normal Google Suite domain has. So that's always fun. And you can be, you can also use it to train people. You can give everybody accounts. You can treat it as if you were the owner of your own school. And the other really big perk is you get a very good working knowledge on how it works. And apparently Steph wants me to cut off. So I'll just stop. No. Okay. So uh, I'm going to leave you with the certified innovator people, which is the very, very awesome Abit Patel and the excellently awesome, although she should be upside down, my friend Leslie Altman from Down Under. Take it away, people. Hi, Hello. everyone. Yeah, we, um, Stephanie's definitely left the uh, the dynamic comedy duo till last. Uh, this, so, uh, this, this is uh, the team. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, well, thank, thank you to, uh, was it Judy and Bonnie and Steph and Luis and, and, and Steph for uh, a great presentation so far. Um, we are going to uh, completely turn it upside down and uh, and totally wing it. And um, yeah, let's let, let's take it away, Leslie. Um, Okay, look, we are, we are an awesome uh, team, all of us, and we're so excited to be here to support um, Stephanie in her new GEG North Cal launch. And um, so to, we are the inspirational duo here. We uh, are going to tell you a little bit about, um, or a lot, about our exciting uh, Google Innovator experience. So I'll just introduce myself quickly and then let Abbott have his say. There could be time left. Um, I'm Leslie Altman. Uh, I'm from Australia, down under, we say here. I attended the, uh, the Sydney Academy. Uh, we are, uh, we're, you know, celebrating our anniversary right now this month. So Stephanie Howell and I first met at Sydney one year ago this week. And I've taught, uh, my history is I've taught in regional primary schools uh, for a long time. Um, so I've seen a lot of changes and innovation is about change. Uh, I've, look, I've used, I've experienced slate boards to jam boards, ink wells to internet, jelly pads to Google Classroom. So I am an ad advocate of lifelong learning and that's what innovators are all about. Learn to relearn to learn. So over to you, Abbott. Uh, how long do we have, uh, Leslie? Right. Not long <laughs> I'm, now. Uh, I'm, I'm just cool. <laughs> I'm uh, for those of you who don't know me. I'm uh, Abid Patel. Uh, I'm an IT director from uh, London uh, in England. Um, I'm also um, a fellow certified innovator from the uh, London 19 cohort. Woohoo! Um, and yeah, we're basically going to talk to you about um, our innovator experience um, and why you definitely, definitely, definitely need to uh, apply for innovator. Um, so as you can see, we've we've put a kind of breakdown here of of uh, all of the uh, important um, steps in the the innovator program, and uh, so we, we we're going to talk through uh, some of the uh, things that you need to do, what the experiences are going to be. And um, uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 the way f the way forward. And and you know, we are here today because of that innovative experience, and it is a life changing experience. I can't I can't stress that enough. How how amazing it is! The fact that most of us are here today doing these amazing things is because of this certified innovator program. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing we'll be sharing uh, the information about the um, the upcoming cohorts um, for 2020 and and what you need to do. Okay, so yes, let's look at this. Here are the cohorts for 2020. No, oh yes, there's two English speaking uh, cohorts and two Spanish speaking cohorts. Um, so how was your? How did you feel about your application, Abbott? Um, putting all of your ideas together and the video. Yeah, so um, my application, uh, I was uh, I was introduced to the Innovator Program by Dean Stokes um, at the Bet Show um, in 20, 2019 when he told me, uh, Abid, you, you definitely need to apply for Innovator. And I, I said to him, seriously, that's not something that I can do, is it? And, and he's like, yeah, you of all people need to be doing applying for innovator and at the time i didn't have any 
certifications whatsoever. I didn't have uh, no level one, no level two, nothing like that. And I practically got that done um, and then went about um, applying for um, applying for the uh, innovator program. Um, so I applied for the uh, the London 19 Academy because it was the uh, the closest academy to me. And um, yeah, we will talk about uh, what the application process entails. Um, but as you can see on this slide, um, there were several uh, English speaking academies um, last year, uh, some of which are represented today. So Leslie and Stephanie were from Sydney 19. Uh, you had myself from uh, London 19. Um, Stephanie Rostein, uh, the leader of uh, Gagnor Cal, it was, and Anne Bonnie were from uh, Singapore 19. And then you had uh, Luis um, at uh, NYC 19. And I know we've got a few more NYC 19 people in the chat. Um, and then also there was another speak, English speaking one, which was uh, Sweden 19. There were also some uh, foreign language uh, academies. We had, a, a, I think it was uh, Japan, uh, and we also had Brazil uh, as well. Uh, so this year there are going to be two English speaking academies. There's going to be uh, Sunnyvale um, in California. Um, so uh, everyone here in, in the chat who isn't an innovator, uh, definitely look out for that one. That one's coming in, in July um, very soon. Uh, and then there's also another English speaking academy in August in uh, Sydney, Australia. Um, and then Sorry. there are two uh, Spanish-speaking academies. There's one in uh, Mexico um, at the end of the year, and there's also one in Spain, um, just just a little bit before that. So it was really exciting being at the academy. Uh, we had our uh, we had Monica Martinez uh, supporting us in our design thinking, and it was something that I hadn't really explored a lot of, and it really opened my mind up, and it really helped me personally and professionally to uh, just to follow up after our academy experience. And then of course we hit the post academy blues. I think I wrote my blog post, I've got it in the uh, in in the slideshow here, that it's um it, it really hit hard because we, you know, we missed each other so much. And that's where the power of our PLNs came in, our profession professional learning networks came into play and we were able to support each other. And um, I, I was feeling very apprehensive about the application and I'm sure everyone else was and they are now. And um, and I really uh, found this sentence from uh, Brene Brown's uh, book, Dare to Lead. You can't get to courage without rumbling the vulnerability. So embrace the suck. So when you are feeling that, uh, you know, you rumbling the vulnerability, if you're in that stage, I. I coined the, well, I didn't coin these new phrases, um, but they were new to me and I use them almost daily. Just do it. You know, you've, you've prepared, you've got everything ready, just do it. And uh, I've talked to so many people who talk about failure. Uh, I, I'm failing fast. I feel, I feel weighed down. And something that the Academy taught me is to fail forward into the next part of the challenge. So that really gets me through daily. I think what's really important about, especially that latter part about failing forward, is how, you know, we, we all come. I think most of us have come to to the academy um, with the mindset that failure is a really bad thing, um, and and it's not something that you should even consider, uh, you know, entertaining in any way whatsoever. And if you do fail, then that's it. That's the end, um, and you're going to be in serious trouble for it. And I think one of the most comforting facts about the academy is how they turn you around in terms of your mind. That you know, failure is a learning experience, and you know, don't be afraid to fail at all. And the fact that you celebrate your failure, you know, failure is a good thing, and it's seen as a learning experience. And uh, just even at the academy, when you're when you're working on your on your pro, uh, project and when you're working on your challenge, and uh, you come across a a brick wall and you know that you can't go any further, you ring what's called a fail bell and you get a huge standing ovation for it, and it's an amazing feeling. It's you know when you're when you're down in the dumps and you think that right, I've done all of this work, and suddenly there's no there's there's no way forward, and I'm like two days behind now and everyone else is like you know running away with their projects and then you ring that fail bell that you know that 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 support experience you get 
after you've rung that fail bell is is absolutely amazing um and and it, it really changes your mindset to say that you know what nothing nothing is out of my capability now i i can i can reach for the stars and and the that also the the the, the other mindset they teach you about is 10x uh, thinking and how how 10x that having that 10x mindset that you know reach for the stars you know uh, go for it why can't you do this what what's stopping you um uh, you know if it's if it's not scientifically and physically impossible to do then there's nothing to say that you can't achieve that you know you might you might have to go through certain obstacles and 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 hoops to 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 get to that place but ultimately it is possible and and you will succeed and and also something else that came to me during the academy that i felt such uh, an imposter being there i'm thinking what am i doing here you know this is so many other great people that i know should be here in this seat and am i taking up space and then you start talking to other people and everyone else feels like that i, I couldn't get over it and the fact that it the failure uh, the fail bill is rung and celebrated and the fact that you're feeling as if you shouldn't be there I mean that's talked about and celebrated as well oh yeah the, the imposter syndrome is real big time big, um, big bird at the, the table I just the, yeah, yeah the, and, and and it is so comforting to know because you know I, I I came in with that mindset that I'm not a teacher I, you know I work in I work in IT and you know it's that it's that hidden role in school that no one knows about and we've got some great teachers and educators in the room here and you know i'm not i'm not i'm not good enough to be here and then suddenly you speak about it and um uh, dean stokes at our academy he 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 spoke about it and he told us his story um about imposter syndrome and then you speak to everyone else and everyone else is thinking the exact same thing that there are 35 other amazing people in this room i don't deserve to be here if we're all thinking that and we're all here we all deserve to be here and that, that is an amazing thing Absolutely. No, it's a, it's an incredible experience. And if you are thinking about it, and I saw a few people in the chat, if you are thinking about it, there's plenty of us here that you can talk to. So um, just a few quick steps here. Um, Abba, do you want to outline those? These are some uh, application steps that we need to have. Um, yes. So the, uh, the, the prerequisite um, is you need to be a Google Certified Educator Level 2, which um, Stephanie and Luis have, uh, have touched on. So uh, $25, um, three-hour exam, get it out of the way. Um, and make sure you leave yourself plenty of time before the uh, application deadline, um, because if you don't get, if you're not successful at the first attempt um, in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the level two certification, you need to wait, uh, I think, seven days and then uh, uh, before you can do it again. Before so you can recertify, you, yeah. Uh, if, make sure you leave yourself enough time. Uh, if you are uh, and you are successful with level two, then go ahead and start your innovate application. Uh, go to certifiedinnovators.com. Uh, yep, the links are all there. Yep. Uh, and basically find yourself that uh, academy, uh, whether it's in your region or not. Um, and don't, one thing I, I, I say to people, um, especially in 2020, where there's a, a limited number, uh, don't be afraid of, of uh, an academy being out of your region. Um, definitely go ahead and apply for it. Even if you don't get into that uh, academy it is a learning experience just going through the application process but definitely I mean uh, I went to London which is where I live but I saw my fellow cohort members who came from all around the world mainly from the states and and Canada and the amazing experience they had and then having spoken to people like you know both Stephanie's and and those those guys who went to um, foreign academies it is such an amazing experience going somewhere else where um it, that it's kind of out of your hometown it's out of your comfort and uh definitely definitely apply for a foreign academy um and um yeah uh, when it comes to the application uh, you need to think about a challenge um in your classroom in your school or in education in general that you you'd like to solve something that there isn't a solution for Already. something that really really annoys you and you think gee i wish i could change this that could be your yeah. project and, you know and and think big you know um we don't want uh, the, the 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 program isn't looking for you know quick fixes the program is looking for life-changing world-changing um mm. 
uh, challenges. Um, that that that's what makes up innovation. Uh, so think of think of that uh, problem, and then there is a there's a phrase that they give you at the academy: fall in love with the problem. So fall in love with that problem. Look at it from the aspect of the people who are experiencing that problem. So interview um, a few members of staff, interview some students, um, get their get, get their viewpoints on what the problem is. The application is going to ask you that. And then you need to talk about, and then you need to think about your video. So uh, last year when we applied to 2019 uh, cohorts, um, we had a we had to make up a 60 second video. So uh, this year um, they've changed it to 90 seconds. So you've got a bit more time to uh, play around with. But the way they're looking at it is they want to talk. You want to talk about yourself for the first 30 seconds. Uh, show your passion. Show your googliness. You know. Show why you're you're cut out to be an innovator. Um, we want people who can change the world. We want people who who are actively engaged in ed tech. Who have that passion for ed tech and and definitely um you know um get that out in 30 seconds and then the second half of the video so the 60 seconds make sure you uh, talk about your challenge and again show your passion for that challenge and um you know talk about uh, talk about what it is how it's affecting people and uh, how it affects you the number one golden rule and i can't stress this enough the number one golden rule is do not talk about a solution don't go anywhere near a solution the solution is for the academy um you will not get accepted if you talk about a solution that's the number one reason why people don't usually get selected go for go for um the, for the challenge and celebrate the challenge and uh, talk about that with with as much passion as possible um, absolutely uh, another another tip i will give you is when you share your video and share anything about you make sure you check your links are public and they're working check them in an incognito window um definitely 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 that's another reason why people don't get selected because the links that they shared didn't work for the people who are marking the applications so make sure you check everything in an incognito window double check um and also reach out on on twitter you've got the uh the hashtag um uh, google ei um reach out reach out to um reach out to folks on 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 twitter and ask them to um uh, ask them to uh, take a look at your applications uh because um the, you, you'll find the 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 innovator community there's 2000 i think there's 2200 of us out there and um, you'll find that the community is so amazing. Uh, the community is really, really engaging and helpful, and everyone will be more than happy to absolutely to you and, and look through your application. Because we've got you, we've got our um, Twitter handles there, and uh, so reach out to us. There's um, uh, something that really, you know, really spoke to me. I was so apprehensive to uh, go through the application. Uh, uh, and I, I felt uh, that I, you know, wasn't very confident. Um, I had the imposter syndrome well entrenched in that imposter syndrome long before I pressed submit. In fact, I nearly didn't hit submit. I was so um, concerned that I was taking up someone else's space that I thought, you know, like if I don't hit submit, I can actually look at people and say, you know, I didn't get in. And, uh, and I thought, this is, this is just madness. I've done it all. I've done my video. I've prepared. Uh, I've got a year goal setting uh, application in place for me anyway. And I thought, starve the lizards. I'm just going to do this. Hit submit. And uh, so I created this open chat with uh, mentors uh, or, and I innovators to um, allow people who are thinking about applying uh, to come and join us and I've split the time zones on uh, on a weekend so people in the northern hemisphere will have a good time uh, zone to uh, to come and pop in we've got the link there just sign up and every second week it will be in a different time zone and we'll be getting people who are coming along and they leave the chat hour the uh, the meet hour and they'll say that they feel a lot more comfortable about uh, applying and if they, if we can do that for you uh, I'm really passionate about um, giving that opportunity to people so we meet every two weeks and um, time zones to uh, suit your area 
and we have innovators online and we look we can talk underwater so i try and uh, separate the innovators time and give people a chance to reach out um, talk about their question their how might we statement that they are putting together and they ask about the academy so if you are thinking or you know someone who wants to become an uh, innovator give them that link tell them to pop in we'd love to see them and um you know create create your stories um this um uh that that little gif you see there that's that's my story from the academy how um i i basically stumbled and um sprained my ankle um uh, whilst I was doing my graduation speech, and you know that that's probably a prime example of uh, of failing forward. You know, uh, it's I remember fact, that. Yeah, you know, I remember uh, that, Abbott, and I knew you then before <laughs> I knew you. And I thought, who is this guy? <laughs> and and I think that's that that's that's definitely is, isn't it? It's the uh, it's all about you know building building that um, uh, that that story and uh, taking that forward. And uh, you know that's it for me. And um, uh, I, I like to call it the, uh, the the greatest sprained ankle in innovative history. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you both so much. Um, and I think that the Innovator Academy is something that has for sure changed all of us. Um, and it is what has brought this group that is here in front of you together today. Um, one of the things I was thinking about um, as each of the presenters were talking is that I am so excited about the launch of this GEG group, to be honest with you. And I think that there are such a variety of people coming from many different places. So um, with that, I'm gonna thank, thank Leslie and Avid, and um, you're more than welcome to stay with me for a little bit. We will move to Q&A in just a second, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you all um, as we move towards some GEG NorCal talk. Um, and we might get Mark coming, popping in and I'll, and if, if he's unable to come in and join us live, I'm happy to share this. I'll come right back to the slide. So um, I just wanted to say a couple things about this group. So today was kind of what I imagine in the teacher world, like that opening day, right? That start. Oh, yay, we have Mark here. Okay, so before I do my little bit, let's let say hi to Mark. So Mark is here from EdTech team, um, and I'm happy to have you, Mark. So happy to see you. And I'll let you do a little intro, and then I'll give my GEG stuff. Sure, it's great to see you, Stephanie. And it uh, it actually feels like uh, great timing because the main thing I wanted to say was congratulations. Like I know you and many of the others on here, and many of the, the people watching and participating have been uh, working towards this for a long time. So it's awesome to see this GEG come together. Also, GEGs being sort of the local manifestation of the. Um, Google for Education community with innovators and trainers and, and so forth are, are really important, even at a time when we can't meet locally. So uh, extra kudos for making this meeting happen virtually um, in the middle of all this, uh, still kicking off the GEG. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, the other thing I wanted to share, and thanks for the opportunity to share, is that uh, EdTech team, like everybody else, has been uh, pivoting and iterating on our work over the last uh, couple of months. Um, and what we've got in place right now that's probably best for sharing with a GEG is our digital learning resource hub. So if you go to the, the short link that Stephanie put up, it's just edtech.team slash DL hub is a quick, easy way to remember it, edtech.team slash DL hub. Uh, and pro tip for those of you that are uh, wanting to pick up pro tips here, that's just a uh, bit.ly with our own, um, it's a bit.ly pro with our own URL. So we bought the dot team uh, domain name, but edtech.team slash DL hub will take you to our distance learning resource hub. There you're gonna find all kinds of things. Um, we have several uh, free live webinars every week. So those are listed there and archived there at this particular moment, it's a Friday. So we didn't list next week's yet. It's, we've given ourselves time to be um, uh, responsive, uh, but you can find all the archives. There's also uh, a number of other free resources there. We're giving away five of our online classes for free. They're the five that we thought were most uh, suitable to helping people get started with distance learning. So G Suite Basics, um, Google Classroom Base Mix and an intermediate and a four C's course and a digital citizenship course. So share that. Anybody can uh, can participate in those for free. Uh, and then we've got some downloadable quick start guides, particularly for those people who might be really overwhelmed. They can start there instead of digging through online resources. Uh, and some relevant blog posts are uh, are collected there too. So 
Obviously, there's a lot of other ways uh, our team can help if you guys need it. Uh, we certainly have the capacity for virtual PD. We're doing literally everything we do normally. We're doing it all virtual right now, even summits with keynotes and concurrent sessions and everything. But, uh, but this hub might be a great place to pick up some free resources for you and your colleagues. Um, and of course, anybody who's here that wants to talk about it or has uh, needs they want to chat about, I'm always happy to help them. would love to hear from any of you. So thanks for the, the opportunity to come, come share with everybody, Stephanie, and to congratulate everybody. Um, and I'll be able to stick around for a few minutes, but I know you've got a very full panel afterward too. So no this, problem. Uh, this timing worked out perfect. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your time. EdTech team is awesome. So um, please, please use that resource. Um, I will be going to it myself. So thank you, Mark. Awesome. Um, so with that, um, I wanted to say that I, I think about this, this launch really as like the start to what our classroom experience for those of us that are in the classroom, what it really feels like. Um, that that day one of kind of showcasing, getting people excited about where we could go. But one of the things that I was really um, inspired by when I started to see who was signing up and had interest and some people who wrote me who said, you know, I can't come live, but I can't wait to watch the recording, is everyone was coming from a different place. We had people who have done, haven't done any certifications, but now they're launching into this virtual world and they're wanting to know more information, but or they've always been interested, or maybe they're in a credential program and it's a requirement that they um, pass their certification exam for level one, or maybe they are someone who wants to become a trainer. They've done so much tech right now that they feel like that is an opportunity and they're always helping people in their own schools. And so they want that badge or certification. Or maybe this has launched them into thinking about how do I want to do something different or what do I want to change? And I would say each of those brings us to a great place because from a problem, from, a, from an area where you might then feel some struggle, always comes something that you can learn from it. And that's what I think at every stage, every step within any part of the Google Educator process is a step to learn from. And if you're here because you want to learn how to um, help yourself do better at the Google level one and two certifications, even if it isn't about going and getting some other badge after that, I learned so much just from taking the exams. Um, and I was someone who felt like, you know, I, I do all right in terms of technology and I can teach myself. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's not until you're presented with it in a topic that you start to realize, oh, I never even knew that existed in my waffle. Let me scroll down and click on things that I didn't know about before. But it's not until you're presented with it like a question or a problem or a specific task, just like students. Until there's a need, you don't see a need for it. And then when you're asked about it and all of a sudden you explore that feature, it becomes relevant to you. And then you are like, how did I live before this? What did I do? Um, so I think with each of these, my hope in this group is that we bring you some of those so that you're not sifting through um, so much yourself. There's a ton out there. And that we use this as a hub to share out and showcase best ofs, highlight, bring people on, um, have other presenters and co-leaders and captains, um, and that we will grow this group to be a resource and that we will connect with other GEGs that are doing it and doing it well and that we'll continue to learn from them. So um, so my recommendations for places that you can go, and then we'll get to some Q&A that were from the chat, is um, we have space here. Um, the GEG staff room is a space that's kind of um, the term that we use in our area is SEL, right, for social emotional support. Um, but it's a space really to just digest and talk. And um, and this staff room is linked here for you. There are chats that are happening multiple days in the week that are hosted by some people within this group and also within the larger um, innovator and trainer community. You do not have to be any one of those to attend. It is there as a resource for everyone, for all, um, especially during this time. And so it's been a wonderful place for people to attend. Um, it has sometimes a, a lighthearted feel which people need to be able to breathe and laugh and be together. Um, we also have our connect, our, our open chats that are available that, that Leslie talked about. We have a link here for practicing um, to help you with your certification. And then our next meeting, I have put tentatively on the calendar for June 12th, which is another date. As I start to um, message out within our NorCal community, if there are dates that end up being better for people as we move into summer here for us, um, if there are dates or times that are better, we'll start to 
gauge what what works both for our presenters and for the community, but we'll try things at a few different times. Today, we did it at this time to accommodate a variety of time zones that are joining us as presenters um, and listeners as well. So we look forward to doing that. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody who is here and who has hopped in and popped on and who will eventually watch this recording later. Uh, at this point, I'm going to have all of our presenters join back here. And then maybe um, Luis, if there were some particular questions that we saw, I know that we had some that we had from earlier as well. So I'm, I'm happy to grab some of those questions if we don't have them easily accessible. I can do that. Thank you. Okay. So yay, look at us all together here. Um, and then I know we also have Judy in the background and we've had, um, thank you for everybody for the, the support throughout this entire live stream. It's been wonderful to see. Um, the presentation, yes, okay. Oh, I'm so happy to see some people, that, names that I recognize. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to give that to you. Let me just pop that in here. I realized it was in the, it's in the presentation, but we should put that bitly. Can we put it in the, the chat for everybody, please? You mind doing that? Or I can post it, I'm right there. Um, okay, so the, the bit.ly for the presentation itself is bit.ly slash norcalgeg, and I'm putting it in right now. This is for, this is for the presentation itself. Um, did it post in there, everyone? There it is. Okay, it's not hyperlinked, I apologize, but there it is. Okay, so, um, and then, we can pop that up here. So bit, oh, it should be bit.ly. My bad. Hello, hosting and all here. Thanks. There we go. Um, all right, that, that's our link that has everything that we um, that we had in there. And many of the slides themselves were, were hyperlinks. Um, or have hyperlinks within them. Thank you to my co-host here. Um, so they they have links within that will take you to all of those resources. And I would highly encourage, I know that we have some people that I saw, um, Alicia, who was here on the chat, so good to see you. And um, I know that uh, for others who might be tech support or ed tech or TOSAs in their school or just helpful teachers, not just, but who are helpful teachers that are amazing and supporting people, um, these would be great resources to share out. So um, yeah, if people have particular questions, I had some that were shared with me be beforehand that we might be able to, to get to. <laughs> you all are you all are horrible. Oh. If any of you know any of us, uh, yeah, this is so good to see you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, and um, we have, let's see. Oh, has, every, has anyone ever seen Mark Wagner and Benjamin Button in the same room? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the questions coming through, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Oh, Mark, you're going to get it today. Um, yay. And then I'm seeing some people from my own school. I'm so excited to, to see people that are connecting here. It's wonderful. Kim, good to see you. Karen, wonderful. Um, just happy to have everybody here for sure. And I am so excited to help people and support people. And so is this entire team in any part of this process, whether it's level one, two, trainer or innovator, or just to support you and what you're trying to do in your classrooms right now. Um, and I think that's kind of where we all are, is that there's a variety here of people who um, who just want to help make things better. And that's our whole goal. Um, love it, Steph. So um, some of the questions that um, that I was seeing, yes, we did meet first at Ed Campbell 2020. So happy to see you, Stacey. Um, okay, so some of the questions that I was seeing earlier um, in the chat might be um, when it comes to approaching things within G Suite, there's so much. Do any of you have advice about how to approach all of these resources without being overwhelmed? I mean, I think I think a lot of people are overwhelmed um, in the beginning. I would just break it down by, you know, by product and use that product for a few days. Like, hey, I'm going to, you know, do some things with slides or docs. And then once you think you got it, I would try another one. That's what I suggest to people. If you're really nervous, try it product by product and then move into it. There's a lot of practice stuff out there. So practice, 
you're probably better than you thought. And I think to figure out what your learning style is, because mm -hmm. you might benefit more from watching video tutorials to learn different resources compared to, you know, reading and reading and reading different articles about how to do different things. So really know who you are and how you learn best and use that to your advantage. Yes, there's so many resources out there, but you've got to know and have that self-awareness for you. Yeah, and then also my, reach out. Oh, sorry, I was yeah. just going to say also reach out to your colleagues because every one of us has mm -hmm. been pushed to learn more about the features of a digital tool that we're learning or we thought we knew. Uh, and in these uh, remote learning uh, circumstances, we've all been um, challenged to learn more. So reach out to your colleagues and, and get together and help each other. And um, Mark, I was going to... Uh, Say maybe could you talk about the difference because I know um, on EdTech team site what you mentioned there's a variety of of resources there are some things that are live sessions like this but um, some of them are almost interactive or they're walking you through particular tools so do you mind maybe talking through what might work for different people's learning styles there oh yeah that's that's a great question I, I was going to offer a, a, a metaphor in response to the other other question so maybe I can end with that but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think for some people, the live works. And I, I don't know that you could generalize extroverts versus introverts or whatever. But if it's if the social element and the energy of other people in the room and the ability to ask a, a, a question live like this is more motivating or engaging to you, then that would be a good a good modality for you. But if you know that you want to go at your pace and you want to slow down or you want to skim or you want to review or repeat then the, the self-paced online course type format or a recording of a, of a previously held webinar might be more valuable for you. So on that, um, on the page I mentioned before, if you go to the, the DL Hub, there's webinars and you can get that live experience where you can ask questions, interact with people, or you can get the archives or the online classes and, and take those at your own pace. But uh, you, your initial question was making me think of a metaphor we used to use in the early days of Twitter when people go on and just feel overwhelmed, right? And and we talked about it like when if, if you live by a river and you, you occasionally go swimming in the river and you get a lot out of that and you get energized, right? You don't worry about the river that you miss <laughs> that goes by while you're sleeping or something. Uh, but you know it's always there when you're ready. Uh, mm -hmm. And thinking about the distance learning resources at a time like this is, is a good metaphor. The other thing, a post I've seen that I love that is maybe mixing metaphors, but it goes well with it, is the idea that we're hearing a lot right now that we're all in the same boat and, and we're not really. <laughs> We're all dealing with the same storm in the ocean, or, or maybe it's a big river, uh, but, but we're all in very different boats with very different circumstances and dealing with it in really different ways. So, you know, the, the resource that you're excited about or your colleague is excited about might not be the resource for you or everybody else. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more with you on that one. There was another question that just popped up and I'm just going to put it up there. Um, Robin, and I got an email from Robin, so I just wanted to give you a shout out and say hi, but um, she was asking for advice on getting a GEG started. And I know that there are a decent number of us that are here on this that um, have been going through that process or have gone through that process. Um, thank you to all the supporters. Andy, thank you so much for coming. Um, so for, for Robin, I just wanted to let you know that the process, at least here in the United States, but it's different depending on your region. So um, May, May is um, handling some of those applications and that hasn't always been the, the case up until now. So um, we're pretty excited because we haven't had a lot of GEGs here in the US that, um, mm -hmm. that are active. Stephanie's in Ohio, Stephanie and Eric's in Ohio is an awesome one. And then there were a few throughout Texas has a really strong one. But when you went to look up the map, there were some that existed. There's Minnesota one, there were a few that were on there. And then some that were in the wrong spot, like in the middle of the ocean. And then there were lots of states that didn't have one at all. So, um, so I think that's the that's the key is that one you have to know what to do. Um, you do have to have someone nominate you in the in the process. So I think part of it is connecting connecting with people that are already a part of the GEG process, so that we can. Um, Help, help you know what to do and connect with you and then get you nominated, make sure that application gets to the right place. And then the other thing I would say that I am in need of doing is, 
is still connecting with people locally to help and have a support group because it is impossible to do this by yourself. So um, when I think about the reason why I'm here and I'm here with all of these amazing people, it's because I needed that backing to to get this launched and off the ground. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about. Um, so having that support system and then growing it, I think about it like um, I'm right now a TOSA in my school, a teacher on special assignment, and I help with educational technology. But it's like doing that for a giant region. So to do that by yourself, it would just be impossible to do that. And um, and the idea of a GEG is to bring people together who can all help each other. That's my hope. But um, I want to let other people talk through talk through that. And I know we have some other GEG leaders. If I pop some people in, that might help too. Yeah, uh -huh. and they streamlined that process so well. Um, when I became a GEG leader, I think it was like almost six months for it to go through the process. So I was like, I don't need a title. I just want to help people. And I think that's what being a GEG leader is all about, is just helping people level up on their Google skills and sharing resources with them is huge. Um, I also think if you want to start a GEG, May has made it super quick. I think I nominated someone this morning and they're already a GEG leader. That was really quick. Like it took me six months. I'm a little jealous. Um, but then what's your next steps? You just have to set a date and you have to go for it. And you just have to get either on YouTube Live, do a Google Meet there, and you have to figure out what is your style. Um, I loved it because yesterday, me and Eric, we were talking after our meeting, Eric Kurtz, and we were like, do we need to change our format of our meetings? Like we had over 150 guests on live. And we were like, do we want, and the questions were so like, there were so many questions and not enough people or time to answer them. So we were like, what do we do? And we were like, well, this works for us, so we're going to stick with it. So maybe what Ohio does doesn't work for you, and you need to change your format. So just think about what you need to do for your own GG and what your users need in that area. And I, I would definitely, um, you know, reach out to the Twitter community. I mean, um, a lot of the GGs are very active on, on, on Twitter. And, you know, GEG is all about uh, inspiring and uh, building that community. It's a, it's a grassroots community um, about helping people to get started with not just their G Suite journeys, but their, their digital transformation journeys. Um, and, and definitely Twitter is a great resource um, uh, to reach out to other educators from around the world who are doing amazing things. And that's how, you know, this, this very team that you see here was, was formed through 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 our, our Twitter connection and um, it, the more and more people are building your PLN will just help you um, uh, really really much to 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 get to get started uh, with with your GG um, and um, you know there's loads of people in the in the chat right now um, uh, Georgina who's uh, just been uh, uh, quoted over there she, she's running an amazing gig uh, over in Amman. Um, I, I'm doing uh, Geg UK. Uh, you've got Bonnie here who's doing uh, Geg uh, South Louisiana. Um, and, you know, there's there's so much work going on um, around the world. And you'll find that most GEGs uh, reach out to an existing GEG and they're more than happy to to help you um, help you out uh, with getting started and, and, and doing some great work. I think... I think that um, I'm hoping if, the, if other people have questions around that, I know that we had um, people who who were were asking about all different pieces related to GEDs. And um, if we need to, we, we could even do another session that strictly on that. I know. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, I like that. Yeah, um, and mm -hmm. and I think that those those are pieces that as we move forward, depending on what what works best, I think knowing that there was such a wide range of of responses for where people are and what they're seeking, at least within the NorCal community. So one of the things I was thinking was that as we move forward, we might end up doing some more specialized days. So maybe as we have a meeting, it, we might know that the focus of this particular month is going to be on particular things within the level one certification 
information, and then we'll send out information about that. And then we might do um, other ones that are on other features, or we'll follow up in writing about some of the other pieces and vice versa, so that we can kind of spread out mm -hmm. the information so that it won't be overwhelming and that it will be tailored to the needs of the community, or at least letting you know the times um, within, within a meeting where we'd be talking like today. We had our own times, but we wanted to see how it went, um, where we'd be talking about specific things. So if you need to hop in for a little bit um, so that it, it is pertinent to you. That's the whole goal, right? It's making it something that is worthy and helpful for you. Can um, you post real quick what Judy yeah. said in the chat? I just love that. Like she personally thinks it's healthier to have co-leaders. So find your people right. and ask them to help you because you yeah. cannot run a GEG all by yourself. If you do, you will pull your hair out. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I, I yeah. cannot agree with her more and hers is so amazing and strong. So oh, I, huge. I hope to use it as a model. I mean, Judy has been out there helping train thousands and thousands of educators during this time and even before this time. So um, like the, the level at which um, her GEG is working, it, it is beyond imagination. Um, and she's training on behalf of an entire country. So it, it's a, it really is amazing. Um, and I, I am lucky to be friends with her. So I hope that we can continue to learn and learn from her experience about, um, yeah, connect. It's all about connecting with people, and I think once, once you've connected, once you've established those kinds of relationships, the work itself doesn't seem as hard. It feels more like a challenge that you can tackle because you're doing it together. Um, and as scary as it was to put myself out there and say, I think we need to do this, uh, I had all these people backing me up. So uh, here we are, pushing forward and going. So. Um, any other, there were a few other questions that people had sent to me ahead of time, unless some of you saw anything else in the chat that you thought we should go to. But Stephanie has done a ton of work. Don't let her sound, she has put a ton of work into this. She did a great job. She has energized us. Yeah. Oh, yes, exactly. I think my actual hope for it was the process was pretty daunting. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it wasn't that, like the stuff itself was the daunting part. I think part of it was the waiting. Like I think we're used to things in a digital realm happening quickly. Um, but one, if you don't know people, sometimes that becomes a challenge, right? If, you, if you're in an area where you don't have access to a GED and you don't know other people, then how do you figure that out? So then navigating the social media aspect of it, if you weren't connected in that way before. It was like each step just brought me something new. Prior to applying for um, trainer and innovator, I wasn't as super involved on the Twitter community. And I thought of it as, a, as another social media piece. And then I started to realize, oh my gosh, it is a PD opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Like there is so much professional development. And I really um, figured out that I needed to be there. And then that helped me connect with people. People helped me connect with ideas. And then that's this getting going. But it, if it wasn't for people kind of propelling me, pushing me and saying, you should do this. And when I sent in my application and waited a while, they said, send it in again. Um, and we just kept waiting. And then luckily I got connected with, with May who kind of helped, helped um, yeah, the urgency good. and the need. Um, and she supported, and it wasn't that, that people didn't want to see it happen. I don't think that's it at all. It just wasn't something that was happening as much here. And so it wasn't a normal for this area. Um, but mm -hmm. so I was looking to others where it was starting to happen um, and trying to learn from their experiences. And the hope is that if you're now in the US that that process won't be um, as long or lengthy anymore um, for it to actually get established. It doesn't mean that you'll magically have a group of people to work with. So that's a piece that we still have to work on expanding and connecting. But I'm hoping that after this, I already had a few people write and say they'd love to help. So yay, that's what I mean. Uh, <laughs> um, but thank you all. Um, and for I think that some of us are organizational people and others are speaker and some people are magically both. Um, but to have the balance within your leadership is really a useful piece as well. Um, because you'll want people who can help mo monitor the chat, who can post things, who can message things out, who can put together the presentation, who can speak, right? Like a variety of roles is necessary. I know Abbott, you have a few people, beliefs you have some support as well, right? Leslie, you're not. Yeah, aware. I, I've yeah. got. I've got. Um, Just being polite uh, here. I, I need to give a shout out to uh, to Darren, who's in the 
who's in the chat. He's been doing some amazing work uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Game UK, um, uh, running some um, run, running some uh, beginner sessions for uh, G Suite um, and getting people who who are really at the start of their journeys uh, on G Suite. So um, uh, I have to say thanks to uh, to Darren uh, and Wendy Peskett, um and also uh, Ben Moore for for doing so many uh, things. Um, on behalf of Geg UK, um, and 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 that that you know is is some of the amazing stuff that is what GEG is all about is building that grassroots community and, and putting the support out there, especially during this time because we're we're finding so many schools out there who are not you know even at the start of their um, uh, digital transformation journeys and and COVID nineteen has hit them the hardest because you know they 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 don't know what to do. Um, with with uh, carrying on their, their learning in any way whatsoever. And so uh, distance learning and all of that has hit them really hard. And so that work that uh, Darren and, uh, and the group have been doing uh, is really amazing. And, and there's loads of gigs um, uh, around the world who, who are doing really, really similar things. So uh, going back to the advice that, um, that was there asking the question before, uh, definitely build that team around you. Um, and, and reach out to um, fellow uh, trainers and inno innovators and, and Google educators because that is what is going to build uh, to, uh, to help to build your GEG. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm just starting mine and uh, I'm relying on this community and I think Bonnie is in the same situation. Yeah, weeks, and we're, le we're learning, we're learning. And um, uh, Chris Betcher here in Australia, he's program manager here at Google. Uh, headquarters and he's been so supportive and uh, he keeps saying no you're doing it you're fine you just keep building on it uh, so the my PLN this group and helping Stephanie in each of our small and large uh, ways our contribution is building our confidence and um, and our learning journey so this has been a, a great opportunity and as we as we propel forward I just keep thinking what what am I learning from this digital realm that we've all been cast mm -hmm. into in this moment. And so for me, one day when I can meet in person with people from GEG NorCal, that will be amazing. But until then, this idea of particular regions, it is lovely to feel that connection with people who are local and who you understand and that they're in your area. But it is also pretty powerful to know that you can connect with people that are anywhere that are also going through the same stuff or something similar or on a journey just like you. Um, and so I, I think that that is what I learned not only from the innovator experience, but I brought that back and we're in a, in a time where that's what we need to be doing. So uh, the hope is that we can support each other in the launchings of this so that when we can be in person together, when we can do more of these that are local so that people aren't overwhelmed to then host for thousands of people at one time, um, that it yeah. can become something that that feels homey and small and intimate or big enough for your group that feels right. Um, but then at the same time, we can also then learn and support each other in all of ours. Um, there has been a request, Leslie, didn't know if you saw it. <laughs> been a little bit of a request for our close here, people from returning. But um, but uh, just as we close up, because um, I said we would we would be closing at uh, four four thirty here in California time, and I thank you for those of us who have stayed with us. Um, I, I'll give you a two minute warning maybe for Leslie on the dance. How's that? And maybe we'll get in one more question and then um, and then we'll we'll close with with a, a lovely dance honoring Vegemite. Um, so, um, ha -ha. I haven't uh, seen this. I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen it? Oh my God, no. oh, this is gonna oh, no. You don't know what you're right. missing, girl. Um, um, I'm, I'm out the loop. Yeah, oh, it, re it really is gonna change your life. So, oh, uh, Bonnie, if you, if you, Bonnie, if you need to leave now, we, we will all understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted to to share as we close that um, that at the moment I have it on the calendar for June twelfth. I'll be posting times. If you're not already a part of um, the the community, if you just came on to the live or you're watching the recording, all of that is in the presentation, and you can link to our website or our Twitter. Thank you, um, and I'll post up on Twitter our, the presentation as well. So um, and then there are links within there. And um, 
June, June 12th will be our, our follow-up meeting for this and uh, can't wait to do this again. Um, for our next one, we'll have some specialized topics to help support people. And so I'll be engaging within our GEG NorCal community what people would like to hear. I have some ideas, especially to support the people that maybe within the summer are trying to take their certification exams. So I think that will probably be a place of starting, but also knowing that we might have some people who want to be applying. So make sure to chime in, go to the cohorts, go to the talks that Leslie is hosting and that some of our other innovators are helping to host and support if you're interested in those and reach out to anyone that was here, anyone in the chat, follow people. Um, this is a group that if you if you message any of us, we will always respond, and that's what Absolutely. I think is pretty um, amazing yeah. about it. These are all very busy people, but at the same time, they absolutely love helping people. So I think that's where we find our joy. Okay, so yeah, thirty second warning, um, Leslie, are are you ready, Leslie? I'm always ready. <laughs> okay. Okay, I really like this. GEG NorCal launch with a dance for Vegemite. This really means that I love you, Leslie. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Hang on a minute. Oh, sorry, I was nearly queued. I'm queuing. Here she goes. <laughs> okay. Oh, that is special. A now, special now. party says it's special. I did. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way. Uh, I really like the part wow. where you like, talk to it. That was my favorite part. Roll out, roll I'm roll. sorry, Abbott. Did that ruin it for you? Did that I ruin it? Your, your launch was going so well. <laughs> and, and then, you know, everything. The numbers are going well. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people came in just to see the dance, you know. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, oh you are. In, you know, Alfonso, so happy here. Judy, thank you for being a part of this. Um, oh yeah. Oh, Tyler. Wait, what? Did, what did Tyler need to learn a little bit more? Vegemite. No, I can tell you more. Nothing. Tyler is amazing. Tyler is South Louisiana. Uh, oh. GDP. And she needs to apply for Innovator, and she just has imposter syndrome. Like, Tyler, oh, you come to an open chat, please, Tyler. Yeah, please. Yes, Tyler. Um, like, the second we were in distance learning, she teaches, like, all these robotics and coding classes. She got all her classes to, like, build all these co spaces, like the classroom. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so, yeah, like, that's Tyler, just get on it because you can do it, and we're here to help if you need Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you probably don't, based on what Bonnie. If Bonnie gives you that stamp of approval, you're ready. She's legit. Yeah. She's well, legit. Come, come and introduce yourself to the open chat with um, innovators, um, and the links up in the slide show, and we're going to be able to just chat and support mm -hmm. each other. Thank, thank you so much to everybody who came, and we um, thank you to all, also all the innovators and trainers who showed up supporting this launch. Um, it really means the world to me. Uh, and congratulations, really, 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 Stephanie. Really congratulations. A round of applause. Great job. We this is the best it. question we've received all afternoon. <sighs> we did it. We did it. We live stream. did it. We did it. We did it. live stream in just a sec. I just wanted to say thank you again. Oh, wow. Thank you to our speakers, our presenters, and thank you to everybody who came in live in the in the chat. Much love to all of you at this crazy time, and we're here crazy time and after. So I'll see you all on the 12th. If not Bye. Too Bye.